And hello, welcome back to some more Guild Wars 2 Structured PvP. We will be sold on the rank to queue pretty quickly here. But right now, we are going to make something different. I have never done a condition necro before, and why not make one? So we're pulling up the hero panel, and we'll just refund the traits here. And the reason why we're pulling up the hero panel is to look at what it actually gives. So conditions and condition duration are what we want so we'll just throw six in each and to make a note right now I am doing this post commentary because I actually accidentally muted myself for the entire thing so right here I'm looking at what the next ones will give and I'm looking at toughness or possibly life pool and probably want toughness more than life pool so we'll look in here and we'll make a build based on what we actually want so we'll start off with Parasitic Contagion, we'll get some health back when doing condition damage. Close to death? Mm, probably not. And Doomfire seems like it could be good, but I don't think we really want to use the Death Shroud too much. That's the downside of using that fire. If we have higher condition duration, say 100% uptime on burning at least, it'd be an 8 second burn and that'd be pretty significant. But getting to that point seems like it would be sort of difficult. So we'll just go with the Parasitic Contagion. Next up, we'll check in here. Chill on of Death. And I'm looking at a really small screen, so it's kind of difficult to see. But this one casts Spinal Shivers. And that's really good for spikiness or up against more Guardians or Boon-heavy enemies. We are not using Minions, and we're not using an Axe, and... The, the marks might be okay, but I don't think we really care about using marks dealing more damage. Here we go with more uh, Death Shroud and then Retaliation. Signets give Might, but it also reduces Signet Recharge. That could be useful because the Might will increase our damage. Spiteful Removal, Talisman. Spiteful Talisman. But what I'm, we maybe not use the focus and don't really need the last one so we're looking here again chill of death mainly for power build and utility training the master and definitely not using minions dot not using axe and may use marks probably use marks but i don't think it really would be helpful so none of these probably go with and could go with that but mm could probably figure something else to use so we'll probably go with this here and now we have utilities that we want to go with they will be the signets to use the might we'll go with the reaper's might just for now on a kill getting three conditions removed is significantly useful and death trap like doing more damage on down is good but let's try not to do that just try not to go down and that works out so down here we have dark pack removing boons doing some weakness or increasing the condition durations on want let's take that because it looks like exactly what we want spectral skills don't really want terror could be good doing damage with our fear banshee's will is reducing Warhorn. We're not really thinking or considering using Warhorn. And Master of Corruption, which, well, will we use any corruption skills? There's this one. It is vulnerability and poison. And then this one is poison yourself, but remove boons from the enemy. Could convert them all into conditions. This one will probably go on backup. The might from that would be really good to increase our damage. Spectral Grasp, Spectral Wall would be good if we're going into Fear, but the amount of Fear it does isn't that much. However, the Protection could be useful. Spectral Walk, man, this could be good. Uh, maybe this was the one that I was looking at, not the other one. Yeah, the other one was the Epidemic. This one is the Poison and uh, AoE weakness, and that's significantly a large field when you look at it. Uh, plus, it, it actually is up for 12 seconds with a 30 second recharge, so it's off cooldown at 18 seconds. So that looks like it actually could be useful pretty much a lot, but maybe, maybe not use it. 
Uh, we'll just check the other things first. And we've seen those. So over here, focus skills, precision, feebling, phobia. Not really sure what to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to wiki signets. And looking at the signets for a necromancer, we see that there is only one. And I am completely silly. And it's already equipped. And it provides the 20% recharge. There it is. Yep, that's it. So we're probably going to go with signets here. As many signets as we can. This is actually useful. Getting people revived. Uh, in Guild Wars 1, you always took a revive skill, basically. Except in uh, really organized groups, you wouldn't have a revive skill. But in PvP, yeah, I think it'd be worth it. Plague Signet, transfer conditions to myself, and then transfer all conditions to an enemy. That's good for boon or condition removal off of myself and to help out the team. And Locust we're not really going to use, but Signet of Spite, definitely going to use. So we'll take up Spite and no, no real room for that, so we could just take this one. Go on. Go on, I know you want to. No, I don't. Well, yeah, the wells would be useful. Uh, more for the utility of converting boons to conditions and probably want to swap to it more against guardians or that kind of thing. And, of course, our elite will be the wither, as long as I remember how to use it. That's uh, totally not foreshadowing. So, Corrupt Moon, again, is useful against, say, Guardians and that kind of thing. And Epidemic, we definitely want to take. Yep, yeah, take it. Take a guy. You really, really want to share their conditions. Share the love with all your friends and enemies and etc. And for the heal, Signet of Vampirism is a Signet, so it is a 28 second recharge on a 4,000 heal. But it also gives Might, and it also gives a Leeching thingy on the target. So Consume Conditions will give significantly more. 5,000 base, less recharge, and every condition basically increases the amount of heal. But it doesn't synergize much with the build, and what we want is to not remove the conditions on ourselves. We want to send them to the enemy. So using the Signet there, and using our Dagger, if we take Dagger on offhand, that will give significantly more amounts of condition removal. Not a, a ton, but there's a significant amount, and we're not just removing it, we're sending it to our enemies. And we're back over here to figure out the rest of our build, and how that we've figured out some of it. So we're looking over here, and, you know... Not really sure, and taking one thing for these other ones doesn't seem like a good idea. Rituals, we're not using wells, and we're not really caring about the Death Shroud. However, it is extremely useful to have the Death Shroud. The bleeding on that actually looks really good. It's an extremely long bleed. I should probably swap into Death Shroud and out a little bit more often when thinking about that. And we're not really going to be taking fall damage, so there's no point at all in having that. We'll just take this for now. Taking extra bleeds is a good idea. Get those bleeds nice and high. And, you know, maybe we'll just swap to Terror and throw in the Hammer for Wheel over there. And then we'll look if there's something better than Terror, because we might not be using a lot of fear. So we're looking in here, and looking in here, looking in here. Hurry up, guy. Come on, you're a little bit slow. So the weakness for two seconds, that's really not that good. But, but, Death Shroud, when you go into it, you give bleeding for nearly 20 seconds there. And that might be affected by our sigils or anything else that we use, so, you know, maybe swap out that terror guy. Come on, I know you want to. The terror, it doesn't need to be there. Yeah, we're not really using terror much. You can just throw it in there. Come on, you know you want to. There's no terror on Plague. Uh, well, you could use the Chilling and for the Blind on the Plague, and that synergizes quite well. And it's a choice between the Bleeds or the 
blind and chill, which would actually be really useful to stop people from getting away from the blind. But we are going with that. And down here, we're looking at what we have. It's retaliation and all those other things. Mm, we'll check down here. Uh, life Blast, Plague Blast, not really using. Don't really need the vulnerability for the damage. Increased movement speed would be good, but we're not really going to be in it too much. Spectral kills, not skills, not using much. Reduces recharge on Death Shroud, not really caring. Um, that stuff, not caring. And Fear of Death could be useful. However, let's just try not to go down. And over here, checking the first tier just to see if there's anything good. And meh, not a lot. So down here, Transfusion, healing people it could be okay, but meh. Um, leeching on crits, we're not really going to crit much. Well, we are going to crit a fair amount, but the leeching may or may not be useful. It could actually be useful in retrospect, but... Thinking in here, let's just go with staff. Because we are going to go with staff. So let's swap over to category sorting and go for condition damage. And we don't really want vitality, we want the toughness and precision. So we may want to swap out the other trait to leeching because it'll give a little bit more sustain and down here we have condition damage and we'll just go with undead because it it's a triple threat it gives us condition damage toughness and converts toughness to extra condition damage so it increases it significant amount plus all of our condition damage is giving us health back so it's kind of basically synergy going on and now the question is what do we want do we want focus or do we want Warhorn, or do we want Dagger? And, spoilers, we're going with Dagger. Because the weakness, yeah, the weakness for the enemies to reduce their dodging and their damage, plus the condition removal that it has that bounces around, if that's really, really useful. So now we're going to go just throw on some extra bleeds. So our bleeds are going to do a fair amount of damage and they are going to be even more increased. So it's at what, 50%? I didn't even notice that thing popping up that first time. I wonder what that was. This screen that I'm looking at to record this post commentary is kind of small. But we're looking at here and we're going, hmm, you know, we'll just extend the bleeding durations. That's generally pretty good to go with. And go over here. What are we going to do with the staff? Uh, blood is okay, but let's look at something better. Do we want poison on weapon swap? Or do we want more bleeds? Or do we want some condition removal? Or boon removal would be good. Quickness is okay, but not really for this situation. But, hey, you know what? Sigil of Strength. I could throw that over here. 20% bleed duration. Or, with my crit chance at around 50%, 49, I could go with more might to just increase my damage a little bit, and that might be useful. So down here, why don't we go with, um, oh, who knows, what would I take here? Maybe I could be super greedy, or I could just go with some bleeds over there. Yeah, let's not go with greedy over there. Let's just go with some standard stuff. We don't really... Well, we do have a fair amount of of uh, poison. Or we could use torment, but that unlock cost... Why can't we unlock stuff from PvE skill gear? Because that's how Guild Wars 1 worked. We could go with some more might, but eh. Could go with the Doom, or... Could go with one of the... Other ones, we're not really going to be weapon swapping to heal, that kind of thing. We don't have much heals. On kill, or do we want to go on kill? Do we really want to go on kill? Do I want to go greedy? Do I want to go corruption? Hmm. 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 Yeah, let's go greedy. Let's just go greedy. Let's just, yeah, let's go greedy. So this is our build. We've got... Death Shroud when we hit F1, and it's going to do some bleeds. We've got Condition Removal on the Dagger 4 and on our Signet. 
We've got Might on three of our skills down here. And we have... Whoa! The... Thank you, there we go. The screen just cut out for me. Stupid screensaver thing. And we're just checking these over and make sure we're looking at them. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I could swap this out, maybe. But it synergizes with the rest of my build. And synergy is good, you know. Having synergy to do your... Um, I'm not really good at weird business terms, so... Uh, we're just checking... Just checking over here, the blindness is on the middle one, the extra bleeds is on the first one, and the cripple is on the third one. And it helps to remember that blindness is number two, and you actually have to click it to make it active. Or hit the button, corresponding button. But, uh, yep, yeah, this is looking good. We have all of our stuff going along. And going into plague form, we might want to swap to staff first to increase it, or we could just swap to stay in wand and dagger and hopefully the hits that it does will increase might and increase our damage and now we'll just go in here and who knows how long it'll take and we'll just cut to it oh never mind there's going to be no cut because it's nearly an instant start that generally means we might be with a team comp or against a team comp that just finally took someone to join in and, spoiler alert, there are some dragons on the other team. However, I was playing more... Well, we'll see how it goes, but I'm playing more a team than solo this time. Uh, I did do a couple of solos, but... And this is where I go. Hello, welcome everyone to some more Guild Wars 2 Structure PvP Soul in the Ranked Queue. We are going to start off with the spinny spinny around it goes. Is it going to be Legacy of the Full Fire? It is not! It's going to be Silent Storm! Yay! I actually like Silent Storm over Full Fire because there's some more interesting things about it, and it's a smaller map. Uh, especially with this Necro not having the ability to run around as much. I'm hitting ready because I'm not really going to be changing my build, and right now what I'm looking at is their fifth guy vanished. That generally means they might be a team, or at least a few people are on the team, and they're swapping out to counter what we have. So we have an NG, a war, an NG, a neck, and a war. Oh look, double war, double NG. And they have necro, war, ranger, mesmer, and an NG. So they're significantly more balanced than us. And looking at their comp, they might have maybe some high damage characters. Who knows? And there might be a lot of conditions over there, or there might not be. But we're really set up to remove those conditions. And we're set up to counter the conditions by throwing them back in their face. As long as you're not blind, because then it will miss. And that's never a good thing to lose it. Uh, first off, we're going to swap these skills out to rearrange them. So I want my number one to be pulling in my conditions and then throwing them at my enemies. And then I want to throw more conditions at my enemies. And then I want to share all of the love with the enemy group. Because sharing is caring, and we need to share all of the conditions the and soon. gain all of the regen from our conditions on them. Always a good thing, of course. So Epidemic throwing it on and sharing it around. Well, then we can get started here, and we'll head mid to help out the initial folks. Hopefully they split up and do the same to us. They have two people hanging out up top and one necro that's already in lich form. So that's kind of interesting and I'm actually doing a significant amount of damage to him, which is also kind of odd. And right here I'm thinking, uh, you know what, he's probably a power and holy conditions on me, Batman. Maybe I should have went that first to try to stop some of that damage, try to bounce some people out, but they have their stabilities up. And there is a Dragon Finisher! That's the first of the match. There's going to be more. And either I'm up against a team of dragons, or a fair amount of them are dragons. Who knows how much of a pre-made they are. But we will do our best regardless. And yes, there are four mid. That's never a fun thing. 
He's running away because it is pointless to go and solo into that. Let them hang out there. We'll go help out far, maybe? There's no one over there, though. Uh, looks like a couple of them are going to go far, which means we could either go cap or at least decap and then help out on one of the side points. We'll head back in and... Looking for anyone, there's someone up near our buff, and this is not the guy that's on the buff though. He is right there. So he is going to be hitting me, and we have another guy coming in. It's not good. And wand can be obstructed. I am blind, so I can't really do my skills. I can't really send everything off. And unfortunately it's all too late, and he has his stability up, so can't really stop that stomp. So there's another dragon. Rar rar. They are sort of quick on swapping to help different points, but we are splitting up. And since that ranger is going to be sitting on the side, you know, why not ignore it? Focus on sides. That means we are 5 versus 4. Looking for the other guy. Yep, he's still there. So now it's actually 5 versus 3. They will sit there and not really do much, except for our NG who did actually get caught in there. But that's okay. If he's distracting them, then it gives us some time to come up here and start helping. And our warrior's kind of hanging back, looking if he needs to go mid to help out, or just stay in your home to ensure that uh, we keep home. He's using a distortion there to prevent our stuff, but it doesn't matter. I'm using that to make sure that he goes down. I don't want him coming back up. We'll just wait for the real one to appear, and there he is. Handily ready to get up. We'll see who of our people get up, and one of them did. So that's good. We'll spread some condition around over here. Uh, Necro is here, so we need to give him some condition love. Maybe send him back. He is now down. And there is someone around. Yep, there he is. So we'll just get you up manually, and we'll swap to targets. We want to make sure this guy is getting some love. Our other guy is fine, so we'll just give you a bunch of conditions and this. And I don't even care if you're going to knock me down, so... Oh, you didn't even knock me down. That's okay. Now we have this single Mesmer here again. We will give it some conditions. He dodges my signet. That's unfortunate. Now he's invisible, he's probably going to be running up the side, which of course he is. We have the point, and someone is on our point, but we are also contesting mid a little bit. And cool! Woo, that was painful. We'll just walk up here and spread a couple of conditions down on him to make sure he has... Uh, he didn't get away from the stomp, so now we will Your run. Has the temple now. There's a bunch of them heading to mid. So there's no point in going down there right now. We're kind of split up. And more... Better of an idea... Bleh. It's better of an idea to come down here and help out to make sure that we keep this point. I saw another person, I was wondering where they went. Yep, they were coming up here. But we have another additional person coming up. So we'll go over here and we should actually kill the squishier person, not the tanky warrior. They might not be set up as a tank, but it is a good idea to stop them, because, well, you know. I was hoping he wouldn't be running away so I could spread the conditions to all the other people, but... Eh. Oh well. Now let's swap into our plague, and this is a perfect AoE opportunity to spread some conditions and blinds and all that other stuff. Make sure they get the lovin'. And it will interfere with them trying to stop us from retaking this point. Although there's a bunch of us here, but there was a bunch of them here as well. And it can't stop all of us from stomping, so let's just head on out. Make sure we're keeping up the split capping. And, you know, this ranger's up here. He went for our buff. Can I get him with this? Cannot. Maybe he dodged it, or maybe it missed. Who knows? Lost track of it. But since he's going to be up there and pew-pewing from above, let's just give him something to think about. The fun thing about uh, Necro Wand is it's really hard to tell where it's coming from. 
And he is melting pretty quickly, so he is probably low health, high damage. At least reasonably. Um, now we're kind of obstructed, so we might as well just jump down and stompy. He'll interrupt the first stomp, but eh, whatever, we'll just do it again. And suddenly there's a pet up here somehow. Okay, and now the pet uses his skill. Okay, well we'll just stompy again, and nope, he is too recharged. Okay, well let's just stompy now and we'll get it before his pet can get him up. Otherwise I would have swapped to fear the pet away, make sure that didn't happen. Let's just decap and head up to the mid. That'll stop them from getting their points, and it will give a decision for that necro. Sorry, the ranger. That ranger will have to decide to either come and stop me if he can get there in time, or go back to mid. So we're gonna get over here, get the channel going, and we're gonna look. He is just getting off the point, and it looks like he is not coming up here. He is going to mid, so the distraction is working. Now we'll head back down. Or, well, not back down, but down, down. And we'll see if we can get into range to actually stop this channel and not quite. Unfortunate. Let's give these back to you. Give you some more. Nope, you went invulnerable to conditions. Freaking annoying. We'll just use this. And I don't know why it does that all the time. It's really annoying as well. That one missed. This one missed because he either went flying or jumped. But we can still give him these. We'll send those conditions back, and we'll swap to this for the anti-damage that it does to us. We'll go in here. Now the warrior has a low amount of health, but we'll swap out, and we'll start giving you conditions again, which will give me healing. And handily, my signet is back up. So let's line of sight this ranger, and if the ranger continues on me, then it gives him the ability to stomp. So now let's swap over here, give the ranger some conditions. That is not the ranger, there he is. Want to get in range of the ranger, and we'll give him some conditions. And there's some more conditions, and oh, looks like our ally just went down. We'll give you a little bit of uh, reduced damage. We'll go get him up. There we go. Got the other guys coming in. They're throwing in his stuff. Super annoying. Just throw these down. He's blocking now. There's two people on me, and my heal got interrupted, and I went flying, and I was immobilized, and now I'm gonna die, and I'm not gonna be able to get that off in time. Another dragon. Hector's four mid now. Three mid. Four mid. There's lots mid. Lots and lots mid. We'll target the other guy just to give people the idea that he is there and ready to be dead. Head down here, do a channel first. And then head mid. Or actually, the other channel is up. Uh, right here, what I should have did is instead of going right, I should have went to the left on the bridge and jumped down. But it looks like he would have gotten it anyway, and it's unfortunate. Right now, what I'm trying to do is get up to him to stop him from getting to the point. And if he's not on the point, then we can tick up because we have multiple points. So we'll try to do this, and I completely missed. Let's give him some conditions. And if he is using the anti-condition one, that is annoying. Because, uh... You know. There we go. Clear that blind. But... Nope, almost got him, and he's healing, and he's full. Right here, I was trying to figure out which one gives the blind. That's not the blind one, that's the blind one. Yep, there it is. You need to dodge, and you need to give him away from your your actual uh, dagger range. But the main goal was to keep him from interfering with the point, and that is what we did. And bam, there's our victory. So that was an interesting game, and... I definitely am not used to this build, and we'll eventually get used to it a little bit more, but it is interesting. Maybe change it up, maybe not, depending. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a good whatever's your location, and goodbye!